Hi, everyone. I just wanted to go through another scripture today and look and see if it's usually used in context. I personally have found, and personally even myself, because I was taught it out of context, have used it very much out of context, have really not heard it used in context much at all. But uh, that verse is Matthew 18, verses 19 through 20. And I'll have this written up on my blog as well on my website. That it's in the description. And I'm going to be reading from the Berean Standard Bible today. And so Matthew 18, 19 through 20 says, Again, I tell you truly, that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you. It will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather together in my name, there am I with them. So just right from the very start, I want to look at, is this in the New Covenant or the Old Covenant? And I know it's in the New Testament. It's in Matthew. But it's actually still in the Old Covenant because Jesus is still walking the earth. So Jesus hasn't died and been resurrected and we don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, we do, but <laughs> they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them yet. So they're not actually in the new covenant. And that's just always important to look at and take into consideration. It doesn't mean we can't use information from the Old Testament, the New Testament, any any part of it's the Old Covenant, but we just want to take it into consideration that, oh, okay, well, I'm a Holy Spirit-filled believer, so this might be a slightly different context for me. Um, so just taking that into consideration, we look at, we are actually one with the spirit of Jesus. We know that from 1 Corinthians six seventeen and other places, his spirit is inside of us. We already have God's presence inside of us. So this is looking at, especially verse 20, that where two or three gather together in my name, there I am with them, that God's already with us, right? God's presence is in us. God's Holy Spirit is in us. We don't need people gathered together to be present with God, to have God with us. We are with him always. And so that's why that, that context doesn't really work for us. It doesn't relate to us. So when people are in just a very small gathering, maybe, and say, there's two of us, three, two or three of us gathered together. So God's here. Well, that's true, <laughs> but it would be true if there was only one, if there was, if it was just you, it's still true. And so I think it's said to kind of comfort, like, it's okay. Even though we thought more were coming, there's two or three and God's here with us. Well, God's here with us anyway. So it's not meant to be used wrongly, I don't think, but it can make people feel like if they're alone, then God's not with them. So that's why I think it's actually really important to look at, even though it might not seem like a problem. I kind of never thought it's like, oh, yeah, two or three, kind of this comforting thing. Two or three are gathered. So God's here with us. Well, he's always here with us. And I do think it's important to know that and not use that verse out of context. And I mean, we know that the Holy Spirit abides in us and we abide in the Holy Spirit. We know that from 1 John 2, 27 and, and other verses. Um, and even in the old covenant, God is with the people. Like in Deuteronomy 31, 8, it says, the Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So it, that's even old covenant. We know now we've got the Holy Spirit. So we always have access to God and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we don't need another person with us to have God's presence. So I think it's really important to recognize that and just think of what we're saying. So I, I want to work on that myself too, because like I said, I know I've, you know, agreed with this or, or even said it and um, we're, uh, yeah, it's so good to come together though, right? We're called to come together and pray together and stand together and lift each other up to, praise God with others and all of that. It's just not required to have God's presence with you. He is with you. And then in Matthew 28, 20, it says he is with you. And surely those were my words. So Matthew 28, 20 says, and surely I am with you always, 
even to the end of the age. He is with us. So we don't need somebody else to be with us to be with God. I don't want anybody to feel like that because a lot of us spend a lot of time alone and we we need to know God is with us. So now we've gone through Matthew 18, 20. That was verse 20. Let's go back up to verse 19. And it's the one that says, again, I tell you truly that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my father in heaven. And remembering first, this is still old covenant, even though it's new Testament, just like we've already talked about. So just kind of taking that all into consideration, but then let's take this into consideration. What context are we talking about? What's going on in Matthew chapter 18? And if we go up just a few verses, starting at chapter 15, or not chapter 15, verse 15, so Matthew 18, 15, starting there, we learn that this is about church discipline. They're talking about church discipline. We learn that if a brother sins against you, you should talk to them directly and address it and seek repentance or a change of direction. And then if that doesn't work, you take two or three witnesses of the sin against you and seek repentance again from that brother, meaning brother or sister. And if he still, that person still refuses to listen, you go to the whole church. And if that person still refuses, he's sent out of the church. But of course, and then he's seen as a sinner and you, you, we love sinners. So it's not a lack of love. It's a church discipline, but this is all within this context. And so notice this section two says, if in the if you take two or three witnesses, so they're talking about two or three people gathered together to make something happen. That sounds very familiar to the verse we're discussing. And it's just a couple verses earlier. So I think it's important. I think it's in context. And uh, my Bible, many Bibles say that this is referencing Deuteronomy 19, verses 15 through 21. Let's focus on just Deuteronomy 19, 15. It says... A lone witness is not sufficient to establish any wrongdoing or sin against a man, regardless of what offense he may have committed. A matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So once again, in Deuteronomy, what they're referencing here is church discipline. Two or three must agree together to have the the punishment or or action taken or correction or anything and so that's what they're talking about a few verses later in Matthew 18:19 that we're talking about that it says two or three agree in prayer but prayer is just talking to god you can be talking to god about the church discipline and it, we know that it doesn't quite make sense for this to be in the context of just asking God for anything. Because for one thing, we know that God has every, already given us everything that we need. In 2 Peter 1, 3, it says his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and excellence. And then John 16, 23 to 24 is also referenced in my Bible in Matthew 18. And it says, in that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Truly, truly, I tell you, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be complete. So that was John 16, 23 and 24. And we've got this verse and others telling us to ask God and we receive what we ask. Another verse says, this is Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. 
That again is Matthew 7, 7 through 8. And then James 5, 16, the last part of it says, the prayer of a righteous man has great power to prevail. James 5, 16. So there's a few verses right there that let us know we ask and we receive. It's talking about a single person, a, a Holy Spirit filled person, us. So none of these other pers- none of these other verses say that you need two or more. They might even specifically say that you need one. <laughs> so it's and and we are two. I mean, it's us and the Holy Spirit, but not another human. So this is the only context of that, and yet that Matthew 18 is the only time that it says you need two or more. And again, it's in the context of church discipline. So we should listen to it for that, but not for every, every prayer to God. So um, it's, I, I think again, that verse, just like verse 20, so Matthew 18, 19 and 20, but we're looking at 19 right now is often used to encourage We'll be praying with another person for something and to feel kind of confident that it's answered. One of us will say where two or more agree together, it will be done for you. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I've said it myself or at least nodded along when somebody says it many times because it, it seems nice. Um, but the truth is, it's just we're one, one agree, <laughs> right? We're one ask. So it's not really wrong. It still would be true because you're asking for the same thing, but you wouldn't need another person. And so I think um, I got to to look at this with just a few great sisters in Christ recently. And, and it was really refreshing because I had already realized it didn't make sense. It it didn't fit with everything else I had learned that why would we need two or three to agree? Not that it would be wrong to do so. Um, and it, if we are asking for things that align with the will of God, which we should be basically, then, then the other Holy Spirit filled believer would agree anyway, whether they're with you or not. But it's not required because we can ask and receive just like the scriptures say over and over and over again. And so just that reminder that we have, we all have the same Holy spirit in us and we, we may have our minds renewed to an area of the truth of the word of God or or all the word of God more than somebody else and be walking more through our soul and our flesh, more like Jesus, more like the spirit inside of us. But in our spirit, we all have the same authority and power, right? We all have the authority and power of Jesus Christ. And God loves each one of us unconditionally. He's no respecter of persons. We know that from Acts 10, 34, but there's many other verses throughout the Bible that reference that. And we so there are people with more of the Holy Spirit or people that might receive more i mean you have to believe to receive in different things but as long as you have that it it says ask and receive so um i think it's important to look at that and know that we have the holy spirit in us god we have you know a direct connection to him So again, it's used to often be encouraging, but what I think the risk is is that we can end up thinking that we can't actually go to God ourselves, that we, we do need another person to agree with us, to communicate with God or to ask anything of God. And again, I'm not saying it's not good. It is so good to pray with another person and exalt each other and you know, lift each other up and um, s- sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and, and praise God together and pray together. All of that is so, so good. But it's not required to ask for anything in prayer and receive it. That's the key, right? So I just in loving learning more about scriptures and being in context and just helping break some of the, the lies that may make 
might make us not reach out to God, not trust God, not think that we're worthy and we have to have this other person that maybe we see as more loved by God or, you know, that can happen too, where you put somebody up and, okay, I have to have this person pray for me. And again, there is nothing wrong with praying with another person. It is good. It is encouraged, but it is not required to receive from God. And so do lift each other up, pray and intercede for each other, support and love one another, agree with each other and just continue to do that. But just know that you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have a direct connection to the Father, to Jesus. And it's not through another person. The Holy Spirit is in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit if you are a born again believer. So uh, I just think there's freedom in that. And we know that who Christ set free is free indeed. So we want to live free and not be bound again by a yoke of slavery, right? We want to be free to talk to God ourselves and know that there is power in that. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit in us. So anyway, I just pray blessings and the abundant life that Jesus died for you to give you, he gave Kayam to gave us life and life abundant. And I just thank you for, for listening and being here. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye everyone.